Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my modern C++ series. In this episode, we're going to continue looking at concepts, this time just getting a tiny bit more complicated and writing some more interesting concept uh, requirement statements. So with that said, let's go ahead and just dive in and look at some code here. Again, this is something that, well, at least for me, I just had to write a few examples to sort of understand. But uh, what can be useful is to go to the concepts library again and to see what is available here and just sort of the form of uh, how these concepts are written. Uh, and if you go into some of the um, uh, examples here, they'll usually show you again, you know, the shortened way to show it, which is, uh, or to use them rather, which is kind of nice here. And again, some examples. Uh, but I think what we want to do here is just dive straight into the code here and start writing some concepts here. And let's go ahead and just kind of write uh, some more useful concepts this time. So let's go ahead and write a concept here. Uh, and again, uh, the concept is always going to be uh, templated here. So let's say we have the type name and then we have the concept. And uh, the one that I want to write here is one that will, and again, this is something that has to be figured out at compile time. I'm just going to call this small uh, data constant uh, expression. Okay. And that just means I have an equal sign here. And what do I consider small? Well, let's just say the size of T is less than or equal to eight here. Okay, so that's gonna be my predicate. Size of is something that I should know of at uh, compile time. And then uh, I can just use this concept here. Okay. Uh, okay, so how to make use of this here? Well, let's say again, we've got a templated function here, type name T, I'm gonna say requires our small uh, data constant expression here. Uh, and that's going to take the type name T here. And then let's write our function here, which is gonna be called void uh, print. Uh, again, I like using this print uh, for whatever reason here, uh, but we're going to print our type here and then the uh, value here. And let's just go ahead and do standard C out. Uh, small value is, and then we'll just go ahead and print out our value. And then let's go ahead and test this out here. Let's go ahead and see. Uh, let's go ahead and test out our print function here. And I'm going to go ahead and use int i equals you know, seven, something like that. Now let's print out I and this works. Okay. So this is a small value here. So, uh, I mean, or, or why is it able to select and print this out here? Well, this, this is satisfied, right? Our type here is an integer. Uh, in fact, we can prove this to ourselves. This is what we want to prove here. So uh, size of, and we could go ahead and do, um, you know, our little format string here. Sorry, I'm not using a printf here. I'll get back to that. Uh, later, <laughs> uh, we could go ahead and run this and see that the size of I uh, is indeed, uh, oh, well, it's printing out seven here. I thought that looked a little bit fishy. Uh, well, I got a right size of, there we go. Okay. And we should get four bytes. Okay. And my system and integer is four bytes. Now let's go ahead and try this out on some type that might be uh, bigger here. Okay. Uh, and we could, for instance, pass in, oh, let's create a interesting type here. Uh, let's include a vector for instance, and let's go ahead and instantiate a vector. And again, this would be a little bit of a practice for you here. Uh, it doesn't really matter what we put in it here. Uh, but if you've been following along with this series at some point, you should have seen our vector video and seen that a vector consists of, uh, at the very least, we need to know its capacity, its length, um, you know, a bunch of stuff about it. In fact, this is where we could probably pull up uh, CPP reference here again. Let's open up the vector container. Um, this is going to become a little bit handy here, but uh, let's see, what are the member types here? I mean, we got all sorts of stuff in here. Uh, member functions. Uh, let's see here, we're getting our non-member functions here, but at the very least, you know, we're probably going to need our, uh, I mean, and actually I did a little Google here for the source here, a vector, and we could actually just look at this here. Uh, I don't know what version this is. Uh, oh, we gotta go through a bunch of these here. There we are. Now we're in the code here, uh, for our class vector. I mean, it looks like there's a bunch of stuff here that we've done some type depths, right? So at the very least, we're going to have size, capacity, a pointer to the data, right? If I'm implementing vector, those are the, the three members that I might have at, at a minimum here. Um, so with that in mind here, uh, this size of, and in fact, we'll just search it here, should be greater than eight here. Okay, so let's see if that's true for size of V here. 
uh, let's go ahead and print that out here. So size of, we have four and size of 24, right? So we got a bunch of other stuff in there. So let's see, can I print out uh, my vector here? Okay, a little pop quiz for you. Uh, and let's let's get our window ready, just as a little bit of a hint here, to see is this going to be satisfied or not here, okay? Uh, indeed it is not, okay? Uh, because of compile time, we can't find a matching uh, function call here where I can print out this type V here. Uh, and it's saying candidates requires small data expression for uh, T. Yeah, that's just not uh, satisfied here. Uh, so we can write another uh, expression here. And let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and say, well, if I want to print something, uh, let's go ahead and, you know, we still want it to be templated here. Uh, but let's go ahead and print this out here. And let's go ahead and say, uh, well, I can either get rid of this requirement here. Uh, I wonder if I could actually just negate it here. Let's actually just try that here. I've got another trick for you. Uh, so it could require not this uh, expression here. Let's see if that'll work here. Uh, now, that gives us a bunch of errors here. So we don't want to do that here. <laughs> but I'm going to show you the trick here. Uh, but now, based off of the Sphene rules here, right, we couldn't satisfy this uh, constraint here. Or rather, I mean, we don't even need Sphene here. We just can't satisfy this one. So Vector has got to use this, you know, print uh, expression, which is going to say the bigger, uh, I shouldn't say bigger value. Let's just say the bigger, uh, big type. Okay, because of the size of here. So let's be a little bit more uh, good here. Um, and let's see here. Uh, we are getting, ah, well, a mess of uh, errors here because uh, I can't just print out the, the value here. Let's, let's go ahead and write this out here. Uh, let's use a range base for each loop for, uh, let's use auto. Uh, and you'll see why I'm doing this in a second here uh, in our value. Let's go ahead and write this out here. Each of our elements here, uh, something like that. We'll do the trick here. Okay, let's see if this works. So it's got to compile here. And did we use the big type? Uh, let's see, big type uh, is, uh, and let's just do the, I don't know, size of here again. Okay, uh, and this time we are selecting the big type here. Okay, now what's interesting about this, again, uh, since we you know don't have this re requirement here, we can now use this version here. And to make this useful, our first sort of optimization here, right? If I have a big type of something, I probably wanna pass it in by reference here, okay? So this is kind of the first example here where you might say, I mean, you've, you've probably heard various lore and stuff about like, oh, if the type is less than eight bytes, it's not worth copying or it is worth copying or, or whatever, or 16 is the magic number or whatever. Uh, now you can actually have some sort of concept or constraint on that if you want it, if you have that sort of empirical evidence. Uh, again, this is just something that's a little bit more useful here where we could maybe say, okay, if it's less than eight or 16, always make sure that we, you know, uh, satisfy this constraint here. Okay. Um, let's see here. Oh, now, of course, um, that I've uh, changed my uh, overload here. This is ambiguous. Uh, so this is kind of interesting. So we're not quite done. Don't don't worry. We haven't uh, you know totally messed things up here. But it's basically saying yeah you know print i could satisfy this version which has no uh, requires on it and this one you know doesn't. So uh, this is a good lesson here. Again, just pragmatically it says yeah if I'm going to use concepts on you know one of the things I should probably use it on both of them. So what I probably want here is to have some other uh, concept here. Uh, and let's go ahead and define a new one here. And let's go ahead and say a template. Uh, type name T, concept, uh, big data, I don't know, this is concept expression equals. Um, and what we could do here, uh, just to show you something different, is write a little requires uh, expression. It takes in T. Uh, this is going to be our data type or something here. And what we'll say here is, um, uh, how should I do this here? Uh, let's just say that it requires uh, for our Actually, I don't even need this uh, require statement quite yet here. Let's just make it really simple. Let's just say uh, it needs to be equal to, uh, and we said this is just a sort of Boolean expression, small data constant expression, uh, but not that. Okay, let's see if we could just negate it as follows here. And then we should be able to just say requires uh, big data constant expression, or T here, right? So it's just gonna be the opposite of this here, right? Something that is 
uh, nine or more bytes here. Uh, and now this isn't ambiguous anymore for this call here. So let's go ahead and give that a try here. Uh, and there we go here. Okay, so now uh, we have our print function for, you know, data types that are really big that we probably want to pass by reference. Uh, in this particular case, we're going to pass by const. And then we have our data types that are really small. And we just say, hey, we don't care, pass them by value. Uh, for whatever reason here. But you know, for the really big ones, we definitely want to make sure that we always do it by default, read only, uh, and so on. So uh, hopefully this is an example of a good uh, first concept, but it's also showing you how you can, again, build these sort of concepts from other ones. Now, um, you know, you could probably, uh, probably negate this in some other more intelligent way. Um, in fact, I think if I had just, uh, let's see, you could do a small expression. I mean, you don't have to write uh, out everything. I think if you just wrap this in parentheses properly and put the not there, yeah, that'll also work here, right? So now you don't need both of them. But again, I just wanted to show you um, that you can negate here. So you uh, can negate your expressions, uh, your concepts. Uh, let's just put it here. Uh, and let's just go ahead and show this uh, would be equivalent to uh, this guy here. Uh, which was our big data expression, okay? This is equivalent. Uh, probably a good idea to just define one now that I think about it, <laughs> and then just be able to negate it here. Uh, but hopefully that's a pragmatic use case, uh, again, and maybe something that'll give you more performance. Again, usually you're using templates uh, because you're trying to have special cases in performance, but uh, if you go sort of in on requirements, you should have them sort of go both ways. Uh, so again, we did concepts. We learned how to write our own, yet another one here. Uh, we learned how to sort of build on top of our own if we want, whether that's negating or combining them in interesting ways. And then we saw a pragmatic use case here where, you know, in a lot of my videos, you see me try to pass things by const ref if I'm doing good, especially if it's just a print function where we're not modifying anything in here. Uh, in fact, right, you might even want to get more optimal by saying, okay, what do I do with the individual elements? If the type, uh, you know, should that be by reference or not? Uh, again, that might be a good thing to try to expand here if you can figure out what the uh, type is. Uh, but anyways, I'll go ahead and leave it there, folks. Hopefully this was a useful video yet again on concepts here, giving you an introduction on things here. Uh, and as always, you can follow along with all these concept lessons and more on courses.mchat.io if you're enjoying that. And uh, let me know in the comments uh, or discussion board if you are enjoying this series on concepts, if you're using them, if you've done some interesting things like this for uh, optimization or performance, I think the community would be very interested. Anyways, folks, thanks for your time and attention, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.